Democratic Virginia Senator Mark Warner saying on Fox News Sunday that he regrets that his party paved the way to changing the filibuster, while at the same time seeming to stay open to the idea. Now, Lisa, Leslie Marshall and Lisa Booth, both of them are Fox News contributors. Good to see you ladies both today. Leslie, let's start out with you because my senator from the state of Virginia seems to want to have it both ways here. He's saying, well, I don't think we should mess around with the filibuster unless it's about voting rights, and uh, then maybe we should. What do you say? I say it's really hard to carve out a little uh, a corner of a filibuster or not. Look, you know, back when uh, Harry Reid uh, was in the Senate and this decision was done and made by my party, I kind of cringed a bit, John, because just like a pendulum, we see that politics, you have different parties in power. It's like a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. You go up, you go down, you're a majority, you're a minority. When you're the majority and you have a power grab, Republicans have done it, my party, Democrats have done it as well, it really stings you when you come back around. That's one of the reasons I'm, I'm hesitant uh, eliminating the filibuster because Democrats at some point in the future, whenever that is, will be uh, in the minority again. Also, interestingly enough, John, uh, you know, if you look at the constituency of people in the House and the Senate, it's really interesting because some people don't understand the filibuster. One, two, they want mm -hmm. it for certain legislative agendas, and three, they want it in the House more they do more than they do in the Senate. Quite frankly, yeah, at least the Congressman James Clymer of South Carolina is saying very much the same thing as Warner is. Listen to how he put so it. he's talking again about a carve out. The interesting thing to me is that Democrats are making the case that this is a special case because it's about voting rights, which are constitutional. But Democrats don't seem to be very upset about voting laws in states like Delaware, which are far more restrictive than anything that's being proposed in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, or Texas, or Arizona. Well, yeah, because they're lying. And as was Mark Warner, clearly he doesn't care about his party's erosion of the filibuster if he wants to keep eroding it that would defy logic that would defy common sense but he's lying and, and look this entire conversation about voting rights is based off of a fallacy what democrats are trying to do both with s1 which they try to do or even with mm -hmm. the john lewis bill has nothing to do with voting rights it's all about concentrating power in washington dc and with the federal government because as we saw what the supreme court did uh, with the Arizona case, Democrats could not prove in either of the lawsuits that anyone's ability to vote would be impacted by the Arizona laws. And then, as to your point, I mean, you look at states like Texas actually has more early voting days mm -hmm. than states like New Jersey or New York. Or you look at the fact that Georgia actually codified things that they did during the pandemic, like ballot drop boxes, which were illegal prior to the 2020 election. So this was all based on a bunch of lies from Democrats uh, predicated on their desire to concentrate more power in their hands yeah. uh, and to nationalize and federalize these elections. Yeah, it's the ridiculous. Big, the, big, the big complaint uh, from Democrats in the state of Georgia is that there won't be as many drop boxes as there were in the height of a pandemic. Uh, you know, the real concern, Leslie, among right. many Democrats, we've got one minute left here, so let's split it up 30-30. The, the real concern among Democrats is this idea of voter ID. What's wrong with voter ID? Even James Clyburn has said, oh, no, the Democratic Party is not against voter ID, yet they seem to be. Well, here in California, John, you know, at first, to be honest, I was like, well, you do need an ID for this or that. But if you talk to some of the voters, there are some in our elderly population that don't have an ID, that don't drive or don't need an ID. Uh, there are a lot of people who are impoverished in our country who want the right to vote, who don't have ID. And believe it or not, a lot of our vets who have served our nation so well for our freedoms to vote uh, that feel left behind by having to show an uh, identification in order to vote. You know, the, Lisa, the argument is if you've if you got to show See, ID uh, to, uh, to, you know, uh, get on an airplane or, or buy beer in most grocery stores, why wouldn't you need to vote? Well, I think Democrats have actually shown themselves to be racist and belittling to minorities because to call voter ID laws, which Joe Biden did and many Democrats did, to be Jim Crow era suppression, it's based off of the premise that somehow minorities aren't capable or aren't bright enough or aren't able to go and get an ID, which also defies the fact that 80% of Americans support voter ID law. So I actually think it really underscores what little Democrats think of minority voters, which is a shame because Republicans fully believe in their ability to go out and get an ID just like everyone else. So shame on the Democrats for really sharing such a terrible viewpoint, in my opinion. Great discussion today. Lisa Booth, Leslie Marshall, always good to catch up with you. Thanks for kicking us off this Monday afternoon. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Thank you, John.